A lot of people wanted to know some more rules for elevator safety after my last post. Here is one more for you. Rule number one, don't ride on the escalator. You say you need an example. An explanation of why not to take these time-saving steel staircases made of gears and chains, pulleys and grease. Just look at those teeth waiting at the bottom for you to forget to lift your feet in your thongs. Or worse, let's say your hands should slip into the gap. If you should fall down somehow, it happens. Mostly to younger people, but some adults as well. People have both hands torn clean off. People I know. But the scariest thing about escalators is that they can break. You see them out of service sometimes, and it's an inconvenience. But imagine if they were being shut down for proper maintenance. One incident in particular comes to mind that bumped this rule right to the top of the list for me. You see, elevator repair guys don't just fix elevators. We also fix escalators, as you may not have known. And these automatic stair machines are the bane of our existence. We're all terrified of them. We all know someone who has had a hand cut off or a finger pulled off by the damn things. They're that dangerous. The malls don't want you to know that. Once I was in such a mall, a dirty low rent affair like all of our clients, ascending the escalator. I was fairly new and hadn't yet learned to always take the stairs if you can and never ride on the escalator. Suddenly, without warning, it began to go backwards. Imagine that feeling for a second. You're about two stories off the ground, more walkers and wishing fountains full of pennies below you, and suddenly you begin to fall sickeningly back, downward and off balance towards the floor below. That's what happens when the main chain snaps. The weight of all those people pull the steel staircase back downward, faster and faster and faster, until you're all in a free fall. That's what happened to me. I was about to step my foot forward off the top and onto the linoleum floor when I heard the muffled sound of it breaking. I looked back and saw a dozen other people below me, their eyes confused, then panicked. My stomach dropped sickeningly as if I were plunged forward down the first drop of a giant roller coaster. I heard people below me scream as the escalator began to fall back faster and faster, crashing down like a massive steel train pulled from a hillside by an unseen colossus. My body turned in midair and I realized I was flying, without the benefit of low gravity or superman powers. This brought with it the horrible mental image of what was to come. A tangled mass of human forms lie below me as I plummeted towards them. I saw my tools floating around me as I fell and winced as my flathead screwdriver impaled an elderly woman's eye upon landing. She screamed and I screamed and we all screamed for ICU care. After I landed on top of her with a tremendous force that caused my jaw to slap shut painfully. When I opened my eyes I saw a bloodbath all around me. An unfortunate man was howling in pain a few feet away. He had his arm jammed into the teeth at the bottom of the escalator. And several minutes later I witnessed what doctors referred to as degloving when an employee arrived to pull him out. If the word itself doesn't paint a vivid enough picture, imagine this for a moment. A man with no skin on his hand flexing and moving his fingers, watching fascinated as he sees his flesh lying on the floor, left behind like a high quality Halloween mask for his hand. The flesh bunched up and wrinkled, mangled from a hundred sharp steel teeth, blood everywhere. My head was pounding and I felt heat running down the side of my face as a man in a blue uniform approached and asked if I was okay and could I get up. I said I needed a minute but then realized it was slightly urgent when I saw the bloodied face beneath my boot. I had ended up on top of several people including the now dead elderly woman who I had unwittedly impaled with my favorite screwdriver. The mall manager walked over to me and stared down at me ruefully. Do you have any idea how much this is going to cost to clean up? I told him I had no idea. He grabbed me by the arm and pulled me off the other people. At first I mistook his actions for trying to help, but then his security guard goons grabbed me and started to push and shove me towards his office down a long hallway. My heart began to hammer in my chest. Where the hell were they taking me? I need a hospital. I think I broke my jaw, I told them, but they ignored me. The dingy floors and walls got dirtier and darker 
with neglect as they pushed me down the halls to an isolated room. They shoved me in there and locked the door, leaving me alone in the cold room. The space was empty, save for a single folding chair and a light bulb. It looked like an interrogation room at Guantanamo Bay. I could feel my pulse beating quick and heard it drumming in my ears as I tapped my foot in nervous exasperation. The minutes ticked by, turning into hours. My fear began to increase exponentially as I realized they were going to try and somehow cover this up. But how? Hundreds of people had seen it. It seemed foolish of them to even try. I waited in the room, full of anxious fear, until finally someone came in. It wasn't the manager or a security guard. This man was dressed in an expensive looking suit and had green eyes and short slicked hair. He looks like a lawyer. Hello, my name is Gregory and you are? Pissed off is what I am. What the hell is this anyway? You guys kidnapped me. This is an abduction. I'm being held against my will and I want to leave right fucking now. Language. Tisk tisk. He clicked his tongue, pretending to be offended by my salty speech. I have a proposition for you here. Why don't you take a look? I think you'll find the terms are quite generous. I was about to spit in his face, then thought better of it. They definitely had the upper hand currently. My heart hammered faster and faster in my chest as I read the legal form in front of me. I always had a feeling this section of town was rotten. Now I knew for sure. My service area was suddenly starting to feel a lot less safe. To whom this may concern, it appears as if you have had a bit of a mishaps at one of our fine commercial, residential, industrial properties. Please find enclosed one coupon for 50% off your choice of chili or soup in a bread bowl from any Sal's Soup and Sammy's locations. It's our little way of saying sorry for whatever happened to you. No admission of guilt, just wanted to do you a solid. Your pal, the devil, owner of Lucy Goose Properties Inc. I decided to take the coupon and left the office saying I wouldn't tell anyone what had happened. It didn't sit right with me, but the man was smoke, rising from his shoulders who stood by the doorway without even having entered the room, told me it was a good idea just to sign it. Either that or join the others who were now being made into happy dogs to be sold in the food court. I really gotta move out of this town. I hate this neighborhood. And that is all for today's video, my little bunyips. Liking, disliking, sharing, subscribing, and turning on the notification bell is completely up to you. I hope you all sleep well tonight. Have sweet dreams. Good night.